Hey guys, welcome to Coffee with Arthur where I waste my beans so you don't have to. And in today's video, we're gonna be dialing in some medium roast beans from the Philippines on an Olympia Cremina and a DF64. So let's look at these beans first. So this is from a brand called Cape Pinas, which is a focused on Philippine made coffee. I've never had Filipino coffee before, so I'm gonna be very excited for this. And it's just naturally processed medium roast at an altitude of 1500. I think you guys can see it clearly here. And uh, yeah, the people at Cape Pinas were so kind to donate a bag for me to try. You know, I, um, I'm always looking for good beans in the Tokyo area. And in one of the groups for foreigners in Tokyo that I'm a part of, one of the distributors was talking about this brand and I thought, okay, well, let's, let's try it. I was willing to buy the beans myself, but they said, no, they want to send it to me. So this isn't necessarily paid advertising. I'm going to share my honest feelings with you guys. I opened them once just to smell them and see if these were actually decent beans, um, but I haven't really tried them yet. So the roast date was exactly one week ago, so I'm excited to see what these are like. So let's look at the roast profile here. So they say these are medium beans, but they're actually quite dark, you know, and but has a really nice rich aroma to it. It's a little bit darker than what I normally have for a medium roast, but these beans are not too, they don't look too bad. Let's see what they actually taste like. Okay, so first let's see kind of what the density is like. So I want to try to shoot for like a 16 gram dose, a 15, 16 gram dose. So this is eight grams. Okay, so right now if we're at around 16, I'm just going to put one more bean on there. You can see this is starting to overflow. These are kind of a lower density bean, which means yeah, it's a little bit more roasted than what I normally have, but I'm going to try to put this at a 15 gram dose. So I'm just going to take out a few more. So there's a little bit of oil on them. Normally I don't really have beans that are very oily, but let's, let's see. They smell good. They have a really like nice rich chocolatey aroma that doesn't have any sense of what I would consider bitterness or burntness to it. Um, so it sounds like really rich and like the chocolate notes are really, really strong on this one. Okay. So this is a 15 gram dose. I wouldn't normally try to dose more than this on the portafilter just because um, I don't want the basket to overflow. And so because these beans are relatively low density, I'm going to grind a little bit coarser than I normally do. I'm going to start the grind at around 14 on the DF64. So this is already at 13, so I'm just going to put it just a little bit more this way. So right now I have the needle pointing right to 14 and let's, uh, let's grind it. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. Great. All right. There we go. All right. Wonderful. So let's let's look at this together. First of all, I just want to share with you guys just how how much of like how much of a mess that this spewed down here. Now it's a small thing probably, but because this is a white table, you can really see all the the grounds here. So I need to I need to clean that off first. Next up is the WDT I modified to make the needles a little bit uh, a little bit smaller just because I want to get straighter, more forceful needles. Okay, first let's look at these grounds. So I know that these have already been like uh, WDT, but if you look nice fluffy grounds on the DF64 right there, I just got to do a basic tamp. We can look at this right here. We look at this, this is a nice clean puck. So because these are lower density beans, I don't want to go too heavy on the extraction. So I'm going to do this 15 grams in, 30 grams out. I'm going to put the group head temperature at 80 degrees. And we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to put this cold portafilter back in just to cool the to cool the group head a bit. And by the time I'm done, it's probably going to be at around 80 degrees. Now I have a little treat for you guys today. I'm going to start using the Smart Espresso Profiler. So you're actually going to be able to see the flow rate and the pressure on the graph as I'm pulling the shot. It'll give you guys some great insight into today's pull. 
and we'll be looking at that together. So now the group head temperature is right around 80%, just barely kissing 85, so I know it's pretty cool. So now I'm just gonna put in my glass. I'm gonna switch this mode to auto tear jar from drip, okay? And let's go. First couple drips. I'm gonna pull a little bit. Okay, great. I'm gonna just pull a little bit stronger. Okay. Okay, there we go. Okay. So let's take this guy off first and foremost. Okay. Great. Okay, so just looking at the graph, I peaked at four bar, which is way too low for average espresso. But you know, I've had lower pressure espresso before and it still has tasted really good. So let's see how it tastes. We just got to mix it first. Okay. So I'm, it's actually quite under extracted. There's a little bit of a harsh bitterness, which means I probably pulled the ratio a little bit too high. And I don't have much of a richness here, but I do have a nice toasty flavor here. So what I think I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna keep the same ratio, the same group head temperature and everything, but I'm going to just bring the grind size finer. So I went from 14, I'm probably gonna put this around 12 and see what happens, 12 or 11. I'll put it at 11 and see what happens. Okay, so I'm already, I have another 15 gram dose, but this time I actually moved the needle to 11 right there. So we'll see what this is like at a grind setting of 11. Oh. I know the dose the dosing cup fell down for the first while I had no movement on the dosing cup It had this little these extra um, like rubber glove things to keep it to keep it from slipping But now it's starting to slip a bit. So I might need to use the second set <laughs> Okay, so let's put the dosing cup and then dosing funnel on so just to show you guys, just to show you this time, I'll show you what the grinds are like without any sort of WDT or any sort of um, modification. You can see here that there's a little bit of clumping, but it's not too bad. These are 64 millimeter burrs. Um, definitely, it tastes better than the Eureka Mignon Specia Specialita that I was using, but I'll share that in a, another video. So now it's time to do WDT. One decisive. Chop up that. All right, now let's put this in. Okay, let's do this. Okay, so now it's taking a lot longer for the first drips to come out. Let me try and help this along a little bit. There we go. Okay, good. All right, let's get going.
There we go. All right. And great. Let's look at this crema here. Nice rich crema, not much tiger striping, but it's really nice and thick. It's it's pretty it's nicer than the last one before. Let's uh let's taste it. Oh yeah, I'm getting actually, wow. So I'm getting a really nice kind of toasty, almost like like toasted bread. Like you know how the um the uh the crusts of bread when they're really nicely toasted. I'm getting a little bit of that kind of a flavor coming through. Um, this is actually quite nice. There's not really much of a burnt side. There's a little bit more of that brightness. I wouldn't even say that there's acidity, but just kind of this brighter, lighter taste that you associate with medium roast. So I'm getting, um, this actually tastes brighter than I thought it would. Yeah, there's no sort of harshness to it. There's no really sort of lingering bitterness to it. It's just a nice kind of toasty feeling <laughs> for me personally i think that this kind of a flow profile is a winner but as you guys can see i did the same thing i couldn't get beyond four bar and i just went down to a really low pressure so what i want to do this time is i want to play with the pressure profile a little bit so in the beginning i had a really really long slow um pre-infusion at around one bar or less um, I put it up to two bar and then that's when it started to really come down because I had waited so long. The coffee was slowly uh, saturating the puck and near the very end was when I decided to uh, turn when I decided to turn up the pressure, which is what caused it to come out so suddenly and the pressure dropped and I couldn't get to that pressure that I wanted. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna do the same thing, but from the beginning, I'm gonna do, a slow ramp up from three. I'm gonna try to get it up all the way to six or seven, and then I'm gonna naturally drop it. I really like um, flow profiles or um, pressure profiles where you have that kind of curve that goes up and down really smooth like that. I feel like that really accentuates the best of the flavors. So let's try that. Everything else is gonna be the same. It's gonna be 15 grams in, 30 grams out at 80 degrees um, with the same grind setting at 11. And we're gonna just change the pressure profile here. Okay. Okay, look at this. So it's a much darker color in character and there's a little bit more tiger striping or there's a little bit of patterning on here. So you can see there's definitely much more pressure was put on here. But I still couldn't get up to that pressure that I wanted. Let me taste this. This time, as I'm tasting this, I almost feel like there's a little bit of under extraction here. So I think I learned something today. So of course I wanted to up the pressure and in the past I've been able to up the pressure more, but who knows, maybe because of puck prep this time or just cause I didn't dial, I didn't grind fine enough. I wasn't able to get up to the pressure that I wanted and just pushing harder, um, just kind of under extracted the coffee. I think what I had before was a little bit better. So if I were to try this for another time, I would probably bring down the grind size. I would, I would dial it into probably about eight. So I'll put it down to not to eight on the DF64, and I would try this thing again. You know what? We're all nerds here. Let me just try it one more time. All right, guys. So same thing. Just put the grind size to eight, and let's see how this goes. One really quick for the show for the road. Okay.
Oops. Okay, let's see how this goes. Okay, so maybe it's just because the angle at which I'm doing this, which makes it kind of hard. But if you see here, we have a much richer crema going. And it smells almost a little bit too extracted for me. Uh, let's, let's see what this tastes like. You know, now this is actually starting to taste more like just a regular, regular medium roast espresso. You know, actually, you know, going through this and putting up the pressure like this, you can see there wasn't really a clear peak going on here. Um, there isn't really much of a bitterness, although there was a little bit of a kick at the end because I actually lost water because I didn't let the puck saturate. Um, and so I think that brought out a little bit more bitterness, but I was able to definitely get a better mouthfeel this way. It's definitely a much more richer cup, but taste wise, I actually kind of like the light toastiness that I was doing before. So if I were to do this again, um, and this time I'm not going to do another one, but if I were to do this again, I would do these settings. I would keep it at eight, but I would wait for the puck to saturate, even if it took a little bit longer, even if that meant that I couldn't get to the higher pressures that I wanted. I would still get that nice toasty, roasted, um, rich taste that I really like about these beans. So this goes to show you, this goes to show you just how much the pressure profile of using a lever, a manual lever can change the taste of espresso. And one reason why I like using a manual lever so much, a direct lever, because you can do these experimentations. Now, one of the reasons why I actually really like this brand is not just because they have good coffee. I mean, this is, this is great coffee that's really accessible to everyone. It's not too funky. And so this is something that you would bring out, um, to the, bring out for your relatives who don't know too much about coffee, but you want them to get a really nice tasting coffee that exceeds their expectations. That would be this. But I also really like the fact that they they really want to focus on making Philippine uh, coffee from the Philippines more well known. They're really like almost like evangelists trying to say, hey, look, coffee from the, from the Philippines is good too. If you look at the label here, they have the name of the roaster on here. And actually, um, the woman who I was in contact with to get these beans, she said, please take a picture of yourself with the coffee so I can send it to this roaster. She would be really encouraged by that. So the coffee, um, the, the coffee scene in the Philippines, or I should say the coffee growing scene in the Philippines is still maybe not as well known as other regions, but they're really trying to make it better. And you know, to be honest, I had never had Philip coffee from the Philippines before I tried this. And I'm pleasantly surprised. And the fact that I can get this in Tokyo easily and it's not super expensive compared to other stuff, I, I would get the stuff more often. Anyways, thanks so much Cafe Peanuts for giving me this coffee for me to try in this video. And if you guys have any questions or any comments about what happened today, especially now that you could have a deeper look into the pressure profile, please let me know in the comment box below. And I can't wait to see you guys next time.